Once a part is created or imported, you can create a detailed drawing of that part. To start this, go to the top left hand corner of Space Claim and go to File, New, Drawing Sheet. The drawing sheets we make in Space Claim will be linked to the part. You'll notice if I go back to the Valve tab, we have a drawing sheet underneath the valve. This means when I save the part, the drawing will be included in that file. Also you'll notice when we're in our drawing sheet, the part's automatically placed into three views. The options that determine this are located in File, Space Claim Options, Detailing. These options are used to determine whether we use ASME, ISO, JIS, defaults, and also have a number of options to determine specific things, such as section line length, arrow head size, and annotation options as well. For now, we'll be using the defaults. Also, when we get the part in, we can start by choosing what size and format we'd like to use in the drawing sheet. For us, we have a default library of formats to choose from, but you can also create your own format and place that into the Space Claim library so you can choose it as a default later on. In addition to this, you can set the orientation and the size of the sheet as well. We're going to be using a scale that's a little bit different. Let's type in our scale of 0.3. You'll notice everything on the sheet changed when we typed in our new scale. This will affect everything that's linked to the sheet. Also, you'll notice we have different views here that we can choose. The gray boundary along these is the specific view, and you can see it highlighted in the tree, a front view, a top view, and a right view. These views can be dragged to different locations to place them where they need to be on the sheet. If you'd like to add a view, you have our views list here, where we can add a general view just by clicking the button and placing that on our sheet. You'll notice once a view is placed, it gets added to that structure tree. And we can also change the location of it by moving it around the view. As everything else, our views have the option to change the view from trimetric to isometric or any number of the views listed. And we also have the option to change what it looks like, changing it from shaded to wireframe to hidden line removed. Lastly, if we click on that view, the gray boundary, we can also determine whether this should be linked to the sheet or whether it should have its own scale. If I want its own scale to be 0.2, I can type that in and have that be separate from the sheet. Also, we're, while we're on these views, by right-clicking on a view, you can change that to a locked position. This means that I can't accidentally drag that to a new location as I can with our gray boundary views. So again, once you have a view where you'd like it, simply right click and lock the position. Now you'll notice we can only move these views up and down or left and right, and I can't move that main view. Other views can be created in the views panel, such as projected views, cross-section views, and detailed views. Let's look at a few of those. A cross-section view, a projected view is created by simply clicking the view we'd like to start with and mousing to the left or to the right to create that projected view from it. At any point when we're placing our views, you can hit Escape to cancel that. For a cross-section view, we can do it a number of different ways. We have our status message telling us what's expected in the view and also whether or not we want to cross-section a view which currently exists or create a new view by referencing the geometry that's there. We're going to cross-section the view to the right. By simply clicking on that view, we've selected that as the view which is going to be cross-sectioned. Now by moving your cursor, you can select where you'd like to cross-section it. And if you snap to the middle of a line, we're snapping to that circle, so we're right down the middle. You'll notice on the left side of your screen we have options to further define this. Whether or not we want to create a total cross-section, 
the orientation of the cross section and also where it's going to be placed. More of these options will show up if we're not cross section an existing view but rather creating a new view on the model. Notice now we can create a general or auxiliary view and determine whether we want it horizontal, vertical, or through selected geometry. The last view which we'll look at is detailing. Creating a detailed view will first let us click where we'd like the detail to be. This is where our scale point is going to be on the model. Next, in the options panel, we can choose whether we want to detail by a circle, a rectangle, or sketch a spline. We'll use a circle and just click once to start it, and click a second time to end it. Now we have this general view which we can place on the model. And this says the scale is increased by two, but when we dimension this, you'll notice that everything will show up as the true dimension of that view. Now that we have a few of these different views on the model, let's look at adding some dimensions. First of all, I'm going to zoom in so we can see some of these a little bit better. And I'm going to go to the dimension button inside the annotation group. When we're dimensioning things on a model, we can simply click what we'd like to dimension, and automatically a dimension will appear on screen. The first click selects what we'd like to dimension, and when I click again, it sets that dimension on the sheet. Now, if I select that line again, watch as I hover over the model. It gives me other things to dimension to on the design. And when I click that second thing, it sets my dimension. And by simply clicking in white space, I've now dropped it on the sheet. You can make linear dimensions, circular dimensions, or by clicking one face and another one, you can quickly create an angle. Now, we might have to further define what's going on with these dimensions. Let's say I go in and I click on one of these dimensions. Two things that are important to look for when you're detailing. Three things that are important to look at when detailing is the quick toolbar, which pops up, right mouse button to give you other options, and also the properties panel. Dimensions have a lot of different properties which you can change or tweak to convey more information on the sheet. Here we could add a tolerance. We can set this to a basic tolerance. We can set it to limits and simply type in what our upper and lower limit should be. We might want that to be 0.2 and negative 0.2. If it's going to be symmetric though, we might want to do the drop down and choose symmetric. This is how we can add these dimensions. This is how we can add tolerances to our dimensions which are here. Also with dimensions, you'll notice you can click on special things. If I type in something like a round, if I click on something like a round, notice it automatically conveys that this is a round on the sheet. If I click on a standard hole, it automatically creates the standard sized hole that's there based on what was input initially. You'll also notice little handles on either side of a dimension, which you can use to drag where that dimension should be placed on the model, as opposed to dragging the dimension itself. We have a few other special dimension things which can be done to a sheet, which are also in the annotations group. These include whole tables, barcodes, GD&T, and also bolt circles. Let's look at bolt circle as an example. Here we have a pattern of standard holes. With our bolt circle, simply click one member of the pattern, and it automatically shows the number of holes they are, where they're located, and the size of that particular hole. Lastly, let's look at adding notes to the field. I'm going to go to the notes area and simply click note. Let's say we want to add the material and the mass. I'll just type in a note, type material, colon. Now I could type out the actual material, if this was going to be iron or steel or some other type. 
However, I can also right click and create a linked dimension. So a linked dimension or a linked note will allow you to pull this either from the properties of the part, the properties of the selected object, or the drawing part itself. Here you'll notice I can call up and grab the drawing part material. Notice it says gray cast iron. Now that I've had that in the model, let's say I do another one. Let's say I make a dimension, or make a note. Let's say I add mass. Simply right click, go to our linked field. I'm going to do the drawing part, and I'm going to choose mass. Notice it gives us the mass here. Let's say I click on valve and click on our material name and I choose something else. Let's say I choose this to be aluminum. Notice both our material changes and our mass changes automatically. And to help straighten these notes out, we can also take them, select both of them, right click and choose to align them. This is really helpful when working with a lot of notes to quickly align them together or right click and remove any spacing that you want to get rid of. So again, important things can be found under the right mouse button or in the properties panel in the lower left hand corner of your screen. So I hope you've seen different ways that you can quickly create different views, different dimensions, and different notes in your drawing sheet. And remember, to export this out, go to File, Save As, well, you can save it as a number of different things, like a 2D AutoCAD file for a DWG or a DXF file, or a 2D PDF. Thank you very much for watching.